Bea. All hail to Yale. And welcome to Wind for the ladies. Good evening, Bath. Look at you beautiful people, what a pleasure it is to be here in your beautiful theatre, in your beautiful city and what an amazing city this is. A place where bald men walk free. Look at it, it's fantastic. <laughs> Look at these fellas here, it's amazing. Like a constellation of baldness, not, not one wig. Look at you, shine on you giant shiny, <laughs> shiny bastard. Look at it. And you, and you my shiny friend. Look at it, it's like a constellation, it's like the plough laid out in front of me. <laughs> if we want to sail north, we just need these seven wankers in this pattern. <laughs> Job done, welcome. Welcome, and welcome upstairs, you're right up there. Fantastic. <laughs> and in the middle, hello, yeah. <laughs> Downstairs, look at you as well. <laughs> and why, why have I come to Bath? Well, I'll tell you why I'm here, ladies and gentlemen. Because right now, this country, the UK, is in deep trouble, aren't we, yeah? Yeah? <laughs> I mean, things have got so bad this year. Earlier on, the jocks tried to fuck off, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. And really, how about that? And let's be honest, that's a warning sign, because they'll put up with anything. They live in Scotland. So, <laughs> that debate was a worrying business. Our summit outfield went like this. No, aye, no, aye, no, aye, no. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Thank Christ it wasn't multiple choice. That's <laughs> it. And that's why we're here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We've got to make a difference, you and me. You and me, the ordinary people of the UK. The extremely fucking ordinary people in front of <laughs> the very ordinary down here. The ordinary people of the UK. We've got to take a stand. You and me. It's time that we were heard. Do you agree? Yeah? yeah. You and me, the decent, honest, hard-working, law-abiding, reasonable, sensible, down-to-earth, rational, calm, normal, sensible, reasonable, calm, <laughs> fucking tolerant, reasonable, normal, sensible, law-abiding, feet on the ground, law-abiding people of the UK. Yeah, the law-abiding people of this country who don't want to pay their speeding fines, regardless of how fast <laughs> they may have been going the wrong way up that slip road, no tax, no MOT, no insurance, no seatbelt, on a mobile phone, eating a hamburger whilst receiving oral sex. <laughs> Haven't you? Have you got anything better to do, Constable? Arrest an actual fucking criminal. It's time. <laughs> it's time, yeah. Yeah. It's time. It's time we were heard. So tonight, I stand before you as your governor, Lane Gemman, yeah? You know, I stand before you in an attempt to save this country from itself. You are my people's parliament, and tonight we will achieve a great deal. Tonight we will find the solutions that will save this country. You up for that? Yeah! yeah. Fantastic. Now that of course means that these front cutler rows, you are my front benches, aren't you? You're my <laughs> cabinet level raw material with which we will save this country, yeah? And I have to report to my backbenchers up there, I've had a quick glance, a quick look, I'm sorry to say, I think we're fucked. <laughs> I mean, dear, oh dear, a bigger sort of Muppets, freaks and weirdos I've never seen. <laughs> Christ, it's like the crazy buses here, fuck me. <laughs> but where to begin, where shall we start? Hey, the big man here in the, in the what's your name, Squire? Simon. Simon, beautiful British name. What do you do, Simon, tell us. I work in financial services. You work in financial services. <laughs> Straight to the booing, Simon. Fantastic. So what's your job title? Power planner. Power planner? <laughs> you, you don't even know what you do, do you? No. That's mainly spreadsheets, isn't it? Yeah? That's mainly spreadsheets, isn't it? Yeah? <laughs> oh shit, which one's a column, which one's a cell? <laughs> oh, I wish I'd fucking paid attention, I don't know how to work this program. <laughs> you tragic bastard. <laughs> Who have you brought with you, Simon? My son. Your son? Oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? Family, yeah? <laughs> Family, that's what matters, isn't it, Simon? Yep. Family, do it. Family. <laughs> Family. How'd you, son, do it? Family. The pair of you do it. Go on. Family. <laughs> Front row, let's see all of you do it. Come on. Fam. Fuck it, everybody. Come on. Fam. Fam. Keep 
be going family. Beautiful, beautiful. Do it! Do it! You see? You see how it feels when we do something together? It's beautiful. What's your name, son? Alex. Alex. How old are you, Alex? 23. 23, and you're hanging out with your dad, you tragic tit. <laughs> What do you do, Alex? I'm an architectural technician. An architectural technician. Uh, what does that mean? I draw buildings. You draw buildings. <laughs> <laughs> That's the roof. And here's the walls. And there's a door. And two windows. And a chimney. A chimney with the smoke. And there's the sun shining. <laughs> That's about it, isn't it, mate? That's roughly your working day, isn't it? Yeah. Beautiful though, out with your dad, that's a fact. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's tragic, essentially. Yeah, yeah good luck to your son. Good luck, family, you know? family, family. Now, the beautiful, we're beautiful ladies down the front here. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> mm, my aching bollocks, what have we got here? Look at this. Cornucopia of delights, hey? Where to be the beautiful lady here? What's your name, my love? Natalie. Natalie, fantastic. What do you do, Nat? I'm a medical secretary. A medical secretary, fantastic, yeah? <laughs> So what, you've got a list of bandages? Yep. <laughs> Basically, that's it, isn't it? Roughly. Yeah. Who have you brought with you, Nat? Is this your friend? Uh, no, it's my sister. Your sister? Yeah. And my dad. And your dad? And sister. And your other sister? Oh, family. It's beautiful. Family. <laughs> family. Do it. Do it. Family. family. Well done, Dad. Hey, that's fantastic. What, what's your name, Dad? Alan. Alan. What do you do, Alan? Farming. Farming. OK. <laughs> what, what do you mean? What? Oh. So you're, you're a farmer. A you're farm, a farmer yeah. who does farming. Okay. I farm. On a farm. I farm. On a farm. I'm a farmer farming. Okay. Fantastic. And, uh, <laughs> what's your farm, Alan? Beef and corn. Beef. Yeah. Got some British beef, beef and corn. corn. Fantastic. <laughs> so you got some. You got some bulls. Yeah. Bullocks. Bullocks. Yep. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And then a field with some corn in it. <laughs> so basically, the bullocks wander around, do what they fucking want, yeah? Yeah? and then you wait for the stuff to grow. <laughs> <laughs> they clapped you a moment ago, you lazy tit. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. The old fireman's daughters, though. He... Yay! Yeah, yes, exactly. you <laughs> <laughs> very good at the milking. Now, the thing is. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie, demonstrate your milking skills. Go on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Two at once. Now, the thing is. So, what, so what's your name? What's your name again? Love? Briony. Briony. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, um, there was a bit like a Brian in a way. What do you do, Brian? I'm a florist. A florist. Oh, isn't that fantastic? Yeah. <laughs> Reliant on funerals for a living. You. <laughs> Heartless. Heartless cow. <laughs> and, and then finally, what's your name, love? Leanne, what do you do, Leanne? Veterinary nurse. Veterinary nurse. All oh, right, fantastic. So he brings the cows. Yeah, you come in, you check they're all right. Yeah, you, look, you pass them on. How many cats have you killed though in your time? <laughs> Quite a few. Quite a few. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you really hated cats, yeah, that'd be the perfect job, wouldn't it, love? Yeah. You could get stuck in the cats, couldn't you? Fucking dispatch as many as you wanted, couldn't you? Yeah. I only brought him in because he had a sore paw. Too bad, he had to go. <laughs> <laughs> what are the ladies drinking? Though? Let's see what you're drinking. Let's see what you're drinking, ladies, please. Yeah, let's have a quick, a quick glance. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> oh, oh dear, that. What now? Oh. <laughs> What's your name on the end there, love? Kelly. Kelly, what do you do, Kels? Hairdresser. Hairdresser, fantastic. What are you drinking, Kelly? White wine. White wine, but it's in a pint glass, isn't it, love? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Kelly, do you think I'm happy about that? <laughs> I don't fucking care, darling. I'm coming down. <laughs> Time to stage an intervention, darling. You can't... Yeah, I'm sorry, white wine for the lady, yes, but not in a pint glass, you, you cheeky, saucy cow. Any more? <laughs> mm, 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 no, heading back, OK. Fantastic. Who, who are you here with, Kelly? My partner. Your partner? Oh, Christ. Hey! <laughs> What's your name, pal? Tom. Tom, what do you do, Tommy? Air conditioning. Air conditioning. Fantastic, yeah? As we approach the winter, yeah? What you... <laughs> what you mean to say... 
What you mean to say, Tom, is fuck all. <laughs> yeah. Off. Yeah, good lad. <laughs> How long have you and Kel's been together, mate? Six years. Six years. How's it going? Very well. Very well. How's it going, Kel? Very good. Very good. Right, We're okay. Engaged. Right. You what? We're engaged. You're engaged? Oh, oh round of applause is beautiful. Two young people set themselves up for a spectacular fall. That is really <laughs> incredibly beautiful. But you're drinking for a pint glass. I've more than that in a minute, all right? You'll, you'll bang out of order this week. Oh, you'll bang <laughs> out of fucking order. Do you understand? Because <laughs> rules is rules. Rules is rules. And you broke them. You broke them with that pint glass, love. Yeah? You understand me? Good. Excellent. Now, the, the, the big unit here. What's your name, sir? <laughs> hey? Nick. Nick, what do you do, Nicky? Painter. A painter. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah? Not a decorator as well. Sort of. <laughs> Normally it's painter and decorator. Yeah? Which is two jobs, isn't it? That's two jobs. Yeah? That's two skills, yeah? Because painting, that's that way, isn't it? Yeah? <laughs> Decorating, that's that way, isn't it? <laughs> Doing a window sill, sideways, yeah? Walls, up and down, window sill, sideways. Painting, decorating, God bless you. <laughs> Who are you here with, Nick? I'm a sister and a partner. Your sister and a partner. Okay, well, we're definitely in that part of the world, aren't we? Now, uh, <laughs> what's your name, love? Hayley. Hayley. What do you do, Hayley? <laughs> My main role is a, is a mum. Your main role is a mum. Round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> mum. <laughs> most important job in the world. The most important job in the world. How, uh, what kids you got? I got two. A seven-year-old and a three-year-old. A seven-year-old and a three-year-old. That's beautiful. Most important. <laughs> Job in the world to so the seven year olds in full time school, yeah. Yeah, the three year olds in nursery. Yeah, 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 yeah. so yeah, 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 yeah. So you do fuck all, don't you, Hayley? <laughs> hey, really? Hey, now. Now, so we've got the three big units here. Look, 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 at, look at it. Hey, look at these three amigos. Hey, yeah, look at them. The spud faced one, the spud faced one, and the spud faced one. Yeah. All right, lads, how you doing? Yeah? You, you three amigos, three fucking amigos. Yeah, just the two amigos and a bloke you never met before. But that, but that doesn't matter. That's the power of having a pint and it's brought you together. Friendship. Go on, do it, boys. Friendship. Friendship. Everyone, come on. Friendship. Fantastic. So the big, the, the, well, unit, big unit, massive unit number one. Look at it. Look at the Death Star here. What's your name, sir? Simon. What do you do, Simon? I'm a pub landlord. A pub landlord. <laughs> Fantastic. What's the name of your gaff, mate? The Far Canal. The Far Canal. <laughs> <laughs> The Far Canal. Okay. Right, okay. Brilliant, brilliant name. Well done. Absolutely brilliant. That couldn't cause any confusion, could it? Huh? And who have you brought with you, you cunt? <laughs> he started it. Yeah. Who have you, what's your name? What's your name, mate? Steve. Steve. What do you do, Steve? What do you do, Steve? You are right, lads? What do you do, Steve? I'm in dental sales. You're in dental sales? <laughs> what? Would you like some teeth? <laughs> Would you thought about buying some teeth? <laughs> I like beer. You like beer, OK. Yeah. Are you best mates, then? <laughs> Fantastic. Are you all right there? You seem to... Yeah? OK. Fantastic. Now, the thing is... <laughs> Bless you. Bless. Mates out together. Mate, you've been mates a long time? Yeah, about 11 years. About 11 years. That's fantastic. That's fa friendship. That's what matters, isn't it, lads? Friendship. That's what matters. Now, the gentleman next to the two units. What's your, what's your name, Squire? Jason, what do you do, Jay? Pharmaceutical consultant. Pharmaceutical consultant? <laughs> yes, yeah, good stuff, this. Yeah. <laughs> Who have you brought with you, Special J? My wife. Your wife. What's your name, love? Susie. Susie. What do you do, Susie? I'm a mum. You're a mum? Okay. Um, what you got? Three children. Three children. <laughs> uh, how old are they? Yeah. Fifteen. Fifteen. Ten. All right. Okay. Ten. 
And eight, we're really in the fuck all zone here, aren't we? <laughs> It's him lying on the sofa, smacked off his tit. <laughs> <laughs> you pretended to do housework. What a dream team. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been together? 20 years. 20 years. That's a long time, innit? That's a long time, innit? It's a long time. Yeah, yeah. some people clapping at the amazing achievement there. That's a, <laughs> that's a long... Have you ever been for a pint in the far canal? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I thought not. Now, the thing is... <laughs> But we're gathered here tonight to do something special. The, the geezer here on the end, what's your name, pal? Steve. Steve, old school. What'd you do, Steve? I work for the Ministry of Defence. You work for the Ministry of Defence? Ooh. 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 Are you supposed to even to have told me that? <laughs> you donut. Hey! <laughs> What'd you do at the MOD? I'm a uh, Marine Electric. No, don't fucking tell me! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God help us. Every now and again, ladies and gentlemen, I have to stop a show in its tracks, right? Yeah? Stop whatever I'm doing, drop whatever I'm doing, and say the words, this country's fucked, to which you reply, it surely is. Now, we, we've arrived at this moment earlier than I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> but when a man in the second row from the MOD starts spilling his guts for nothing, <laughs> it's time for those words. Ladies and gentlemen, this country's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Who have you brought with you, Steve? My wife, Sarah. Your wife, Sarah. That's not top secret, is it? That's your lap there. <laughs> what do you do, Sarah? I'm a receptionist in a veterinary practice. Receptionist in a vet veterinary practice? <laughs> <laughs> OK. So you check them in, she kills them. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Brilliant stuff, darling. Excellent, yeah? And, and have you got a drink, darling? What are you drinking tonight? Got you haven't got a drink, right? Good. Okay, because we're gonna have to. We are gonna have to check this, Kels. You understand that? I've got to check. I've got to check this, right? Yeah, I have to check this because it's in a pint glass, right? And you're in direct contravention of the rules, right? And rules matter. Now we got some youngsters in. We got some young Herberts amongst us tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Some scrotes, some knuckleheads, some muppets. There's a row back there, like at least two junior twats. Look at them. <laughs> the one with the crazy hair. What's your What's your What's your name, little man? Ben. ben. What do you do, Benny? You're in your gap year. <laughs> wow. oh, we're on the second one of the evening already. This country's fucked. <laughs> and where have you been on your gap year? Hey? I've been you haven't been yet. Oh, <laughs> You're supposed to go, you useless <laughs> bastard. Hey, are you going to go to uni? Well, you, what are you going to study? Marketing. Oh. 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 It's time for the third one of the night. This, this country's fucked. So, how old are you, mate? 18. Ah, oh, what an age, eh? God, you lucky devil, eh? Yeah, being 18, that was the time, wasn't it? Eh? Yeah. yeah, Simon, you remember, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dad, do you remember being 18? Oh, I could chase around the cat all fucking day. <laughs> <laughs> Being 18 is absolutely brilliant, you lucky sod, young, dumb, full of cum, ready to rock and roll. <laughs> you can bounce back from anything, can't you? <laughs> straight back like that, yeah? Five minutes later, dicka, 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 straight back. <laughs> like that. Yeah, every man here envies you, mate. Yeah, five minutes, you're locked and loaded and ready to go again. Yeah? <laughs> like that, yeah? In the morning, it's a deadly weapon. You could cut diamonds with it. Am I right? <laughs> you have to stand 15 feet back from the toilet just to get it in. <laughs> you lucky son. <laughs> it's wasted on the young, isn't it? Trust me. <laughs> I need a three-day fucking run-up, you lucky turd. <laughs> I mean, all the gentlemen in my vintage know there's that moment in there where it feels like the power cords come out the back. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, I'd love to, but there's absolutely no way. There's no way that is happening till next Wednesday. Christ. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, it's great to have you youngsters here, you young Herberts, you, you feckless twats. It's great to have you here. Yeah, because yeah, if we're going to save this country, we need the youngsters on side, don't we, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah? We do, don't we? Julie, we do, don't we? Yeah? Yeah? But we also need the wisdom of ages. Yeah? We need the wise ancients of our community to guide us on the path to that revolution. And back there, just in front of the lads, is an old-timer there with the grey hair. You, you right there, pups? 
You're warming up and everything. <laughs> you can see me. I'm not moving about too much. <laughs> Fantastic. Hey, remember being 18? <laughs> yeah, remember that? No, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. No recollection. God bless you. It's fantastic having you here. All the stuff you've seen, the empires rise and crumble, a billion sunsets. It's a fantastic thing. Yeah, that time you had to take that penny farthing back because it was obsolete. Hey, all that stuff. <laughs> Is this your wife with you or your carer? Who have you brought with you? <laughs> what did you used to do, Pops? Do you remember? <laughs> you was in computers. Yeah, but back then they were enormous, so you could you could be in them, couldn't you? <laughs> God bless you. Hey, cracking that Enigma code, Bletchley Park and all that. Yeah, the point is, that's keeping a secret, you wanker. Yeah, the point is, the point is, the point is this. It's great we've got you here, Pops, right? It's great we've got you here. You could, because the thing is, later on in the show, would you be able to do me an enormous favour? Can I come to you, right? Because um, you're out here and probably one of your last nights out with us and it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> You're on the home straight, approaching the finish line. It's fantastic that you've chosen to spend these minutes with us, this precious, precious time. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing, yeah? But before you go, right, yeah, at the end of the show, I'm going to come to you for your wisdom, from the end of time, your message, yeah, for all this time, all these centuries upon the planet, yeah, if you can give us your sum it all up for us, that would be beautiful. Can you do that for me at the end? You try, okay. If he forgets, love, give him a nudge, okay? Fantastic. Yeah. Because here's the thing, those young lads, the Herberts there, they won't understand why I'm making a fuss about this pint, will it, boys? Yeah? Will you? Yeah? Your, your teenagers think, who needs rules? Shut up, Dad. Shut up, Mum. I'll do my own thing. I'm going to go to Thailand and crap in the fucking bucket and it'll be, it'll be brilliant. Yeah! <laughs> souls. No, I mean... <laughs> but it's in a pint glass, boys. And that's what's wrong. And there are rules. There are rules. And the most important rule of all is pint for the fella, glass of white wine, fruit-based drink for the lady. That is the most important rule of all, right? It's not just a made-up rule, an arbitrary rule made up by some gobby bloke trying to enforce his will upon women. No, it's a... <laughs> it's a very real rule. Right, that's why I have to check this, Kelly. Right, with this done, and I've got to, right? Yeah, because it's in a pint glass. Now, if this does turn out to be white wine, and it looks like it's white wine, you'll get it back, okay? But I have to check it, right? Because it could be one of these modern stealth lagers, couldn't it? It could. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't it, lads? I'm right, ain't I? Yeah? It could be a stealth lager. Also, I've got to double check this wine, right? I've got to double check this booze, just in case, right? Because you never can be sure, can you? Yeah, yeah, and I don't think I'm being paranoid, right? But I've just got to be sure, have a double check, make sure that what's in here yeah, isn't halal. That's right. Because <laughs> it could be, couldn't it? You never know, do you? Right now, Abu Hamza might be in a cave, yeah, churning out Sharia beer, trying to make fools of us, yeah, and undermine our way of fucking life and make us look like fucking idiots. Yeah? Could be happening right now, yeah. And here's this thing, this whole Muslim issue I find most confusing. I can't deal with it uh, for a couple of reasons, right? And then it's a worrying business, isn't it? Because there's, there's those schools now in Birmingham where they're having Muslim lessons and talking Muslim to each other in Muslim, yeah? In Muslim class, yeah? And they go a bit like this, I reckon, the lessons, they go, uh, Muslim, 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 mate. Yeah, Muslim, Muslim, Muslim. Yeah, that's right, mate. Muslim, Muslim, Muslim. Yeah, yeah Muslim, 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 Muslim. Oh, I reckon Muslim, 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 Muslim. Like that. Yeah, mate, that's right. Muslim, 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 Muslim. <laughs> Happening right now, yeah. And the head teacher's got to do it on the sly, hasn't he? Because they're in there, they've got to be secret about it. She comes in, he goes, comes in, he goes, mm, shh, mm, mm, Muslim, like that, it fucks up again. <laughs> and the basic problem for me, the basic bottom line problem with this entire issue, right, is I, I don't understand sober people, right? Yeah, so. <laughs> Drunks I can read. People who drink, they are an open book to me. Yeah, that one, that one's going to vomit. That one's going to try and get off with his mate's wife. That one's going to try and, uh, oh, well, tell his mate he loves him and then punch him in the face. I can understand all that. Yeah. It's sober people are, are a mystery, right? However, this has led me to, my, to a brainwave, ladies and gentlemen, that I want to put to you tonight 
as my first policy as your governor this evening, right? And if you approve this, we'll act on it. I'll call the Ayatollah in the morning. We'll sort it out, right? We'll bring about world peace and reconciliation between the Muslim peoples of the world and everyone else. Dead simple, dead easy. What I suggest, I put it to you, next weekend, what they do is they have to offer themselves up as designated drivers. <laughs> <laughs> What could possibly go wrong? Come on. Yes, peace in our time, that's what I offer you. Yeah. Also then, of course, is the issue of the burqa. Now, the burqa is a dilemma, isn't it? The burqa is a dilemma for you and me, the freeborn peoples of the British Isles. Because the last thing anyone wants to do as freeborn peoples is tell anyone what they can and can't wear. I don't want to tell you what to wear. It's not my right. You don't want to tell me what to wear. It's not your right. We're not going to do that. I'm not going to say to you, the gentleman in the middle here, yeah, who's dressed as some sort of giant psychedelic homosexual lumberjack. <laughs> I'm not going to say to you. <laughs> I'm not going to say to you, what on earth are you fucking wearing? That's ridiculous. <laughs> what is it? Is it a big top? What are you wearing? Jesus Christ. <laughs> is this some feeble effort to try and hang on to your youth? What is it? It's a desperately failed one, if that's what it is, you, you tragic bastard. But I, the thing is, I wouldn't do that, right? That, that's something I never do. Wear what you want, mate. You can look as ridiculous as you fucking like. I'm never going to judge you, right? You understand me? And that's the dilemma with the burqa. I don't want to tell anyone what to wear, nor do you. But, on the other hand, we're also faces people in this country, aren't we? We like faces, don't we, yeah? We like faces, don't we, Natalie? I like looking at your face. I like... <laughs> looking at your face. So, here's the thing. We like faces, but we don't want to tell anyone what to wear, right? It's a dilemma. So, I've come up with a solution to the burqa issue. Dead simple, it's this, yeah? And if you approve this, I reckon we could bring about a resolution between our communities in an instant, yeah? If you want to wear a burqa, what you got to do is wear a photograph of your face. Right? <laughs> Come on. What could possibly go wrong? Right, and there, and it's got to be, you've got to have a slip for your eyes like that, so it's like a painting in a haunted house. <laughs> Peace in our time. So, I have to check this, right? I'm going to check this, love, to make sure it is white wine. I'm also going to make sure it's not fucking gluten-free. Oh, <laughs> God. What the hell has happened? Five years ago, five years ago, none of you people have heard of fucking gluten, yeah? And now we're all going through our poo with a fork, looking for it, aren't we? <laughs> Who is the gluten in here? Oh, no, no. I don't like it, it makes me feel bloated. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Pops, Pops, on D Day, June the 6th, 1944. <laughs> when you come off that landing craft, you've been on it. You've been on it two days because of the postponement, because of the weather. Yeah, you've been bobbing up and down in the sea for two days. When you hit that beach, Sword Beach they called it, on that fateful morning, the first morning of Operation Overlord, as you come down the ramp of that landing craft and the bagpipe started up behind you and those two Sherman tanks came through the water, rushing out through the water, dropped their skirts, the DD tanks floated up and the flail tank went ahead and cleared the minefield and the shells were hooning in from HMS Arathustra. Yeah, as you made your way, your Sergeant Major urged you on, come on boys, let's go, there's that tank emplacement. Outside, we should assume here we got to fucking take it out, boys. As you went forward, were you thinking, Pops, oh, I do hope I've got a gluten-free ration pack. <laughs> no! 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 Because you were fighting for a Nazi-free world, weren't you? Not a gluten-free fucking biscuit. So... <laughs> Also, how in God's name could pulled pork be traditional if no one had heard of it 18 months ago? So... <laughs> that's impossible. So... I'm going to check this, right? I'm going to check this, love, to make sure it's not some halal pulled pork gluten-free pop-up artisan pint, OK? <laughs> and if it is the white wine you say it is, you'll get it back. You right with that, love? Yeah. Okay, fantastic, yeah? I've got to do this. It's, the youngsters don't understand, yeah? Yeah? I've got to set an example to you. Sit up, you feckless scroats. <laughs> Sit up. <laughs> here we go. I've got, to, I've got to do this, Julie. You understand me? Good, good, good girl. Okay, here we go. <laughs> yeah, that was wine. <laughs> there you go. All yours. Now, son, 
Now, but here we are trying to make a difference. And what, what is beautiful, we do have you here, Pops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the youngsters, right? Yeah, because I envy you boys. I mean, you boys, you're so lucky. 18 years old, ready to set sail, yeah? About to lay the bricks on your own yellow brick road as you go forward, yeah? And good luck to you. Good luck to you. Hey, you're about to make your own journey. Yeah, it's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah? Good luck to you boys. I envy you that. But I envy you as well, Pops. Because you've done it all, haven't you? Yeah? Yeah? You've done it all, yeah? You've done the journey, haven't you? Life's incredible journey. You know, you all young like them once, you didn't have the, any luxury of a gap year, did you? You got cracking, yeah? You got cracking, you had a job you wanted to do, yeah, a job you dreamed of doing all your life. Yeah, so you worked hard, you got the qualifications, you got that dream job, then you realised you were terrible at it, and it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been wasting your time, and it broke your heart, and a piece of your soul fell off, and a lump never to fucking return. And then, yeah. Then you met a beautiful woman and you handed her your heart in love and faith and trust and she took that heart from you and what did she do? She went, no, fuck that, yeah. <laughs> it like that and you scraped it back up and stuck it back in and got it going again, didn't you? Didn't you? Yeah? And then you soldiered on, you got yourself a job that you could do, that everyone else around you was skiving, yeah? So you were ground into the dirt, first in, last out, yeah? Your boss laughing at you, putting you on extra shifts at the weekend, grinding away, another piece of your soul fell off in a foul, dead lump, yeah? Then there was that sexual experience, the one you've never been able to forget ever since, yeah? <laughs> The one that you're reminded of every time you sit down and hear the word tram or Amsterdam, that feels like a... <laughs> It feels like a strange ghost phantom hand reaching round from behind and cupping your nuts. That one. <laughs> and then, then there was that job you got which you could just about do and you clung on for 35 years, expect to be found out any fucking minute. Yeah? Any minute they're gonna find me out, I'll be ruined, I'll be finished. Yeah? You did that and you ground you down and your soul began to fucking die. Yeah? And at the end of it, you end up retired, washed up, knackered, spent and fucked, your dreams shattered, your soul destroyed, nothing but disappointment everywhere you've ever been. Yeah? And only the sweet release of death to look forward to. <laughs> but, You've done all that. <laughs> you boys, you've all that to look forward to. Because that's life. That's life. And so we have to, we, you and me, we have got to take action. The beautiful lady up there, what's your name, darling? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jane. Jane. Yeah. What'd you do, Jane? You're a student? Wow, you must have caned it in the first year. <laughs> what are you studying? Room full of taxpayers and it better be good. What are you studying? Humanitarian relief. <laughs> What's that? A pity wank? <laughs> yeah, <goodness. laughs> goodness. I've, I've disgusted myself. <laughs> Who's that with you? Your husband, all oh, right, the recipient. <laughs> What's your name, mate? Richard, what'd you do, Ricky? An army officer. All oh, right. <laughs> what are you doing here? There's a war on, get to work. <laughs> Which bit of the army? Your staff officer, all oh, right, okay, yeah. So like you got a laptop. <laughs> that you left on a train, yep. <laughs> Fantastic, so how, how long have you two been together? 23 years. 23 is it? It's good to see you again, love. Now, the thing is... I'm here, I'm here to help. Well, you've got to make a difference. Because right now, I'm sure you'll agree with me, in this country, politics, right now, this minute, is a joke, isn't it? It's a joke, isn't it? Yeah? It's a joke. Yeah. It's a joke. Yeah. A joke. Yeah. A joke. What is Alex? It's a 
joke. No, it's a joke. What is it? <laughs> Don't do it. Do it. A joke. A joke. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, Benny, what is it? Joke. Good lad. <laughs> It's a joke, that's what it is, right? And the reason politics is a joke, ladies and gentlemen, right now, is because the names are all wrong. Now, now, here's a simple thing, yeah? Ben, names matter in life, names are important. What something's called yeah, is the clue to what it's like, right? And if the name doesn't match the thing it's given to, yeah, chaos will abound, confusion will arise, yeah? And right now, our political parties are a joke, right? Yeah, what are they, Ben? Project. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> do it, do it. Good lad. <laughs> the thing is, right, because the names don't work. The names are a mess, right? Our modern political parties, the names are a mess. We have a Conservative Party right now, a Conservative Party, ladies and gentlemen, who don't want to conserve a single thing. Yeah? They want to tear to pieces everything they get their fucking hands off and sell, things, uh, sell it off to their mates. That's right, yeah? They're not Conservative at all. Thank you. We have a Labour Party, not one of whom have done a day's work in their lives. <laughs> hey, he can't even eat a bacon sandwich without fucking it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have. We have a Liberal Democratic Party, ladies and gentlemen, yeah? Oh, yes. Who are neither Liberal, thank you, sir. <laughs> who are neither Liberal nor democratic. They're yeah, signing away your freedoms by the barrel load, yeah, and unable to win any votes. Neither liberal nor democratic. And then, and then, and then, and then, ladies and gentlemen, and then, there's UKIP. Now, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. What a pretty past, what a situation that this country, the mother of all democracies, the mother of all parliaments, this country should have ended up in a situation where some bloke waving a pint around. <laughs> offering, offering common sense solutions should, should somehow be seen as a viable option. Hey. <laughs> I mean, who on earth would vote for that? What sort of, what sort of Muppet would vote for that or, or, or buy, pay for a ticket or even a DVD? What kind of <laughs> total mug would fall for that fucking nonsense? So, and you kid, look at them, they're, they're a waste of time. I mean, they haven't even got a thousand year empire in mind. It's a joke. And the thing is, The names are a problem, the names matter, right, yeah? That's why I said, Ben, names matter. And that Nigel Farage, hey? What on earth's going on there? That Farage, Farage. What sort of name's that? That's not normal, is it? Farage. And if he wants to look you and me in the eye, if Mr Farage wants to look you and me in the eye, the decent, honest, hard-working, law-abiding, reasonable, sensible people of this country, who understand in life you don't get something for nothing, but still go to A&E with a cold. If he wants... <laughs> if he wants to look you and me in the eye, yeah, he's going to have to sort his name out. Because, I mean, when you go and get pork scratchings for the far canal, when you go... When you go... <laughs> When you go get pork scratchings for the cash and carry, right, and you run out of petrol, when you go to fill that van up, do you fill it, do you fill it up? Answer me this, do you go to a garage? Do you go to a garage? No, you go to a garage, don't you? Exactly. So if he wants to look you and me in the eye, he's gonna have to fix his name immediately and change it to Farage, that's right. Nigel Farage, yes, absolutely, thank you. Yeah. That or petrol station. Now, the thing is... <laughs> but here we are, ladies and gentlemen, and the politics in this country is a joke. And the reason for that, dead simple... It's a joke, right? The what is it, fellas? <laughs> exactly. The reason... <laughs> the reason for that, right, is we've given this country over to career politicians. That's what's gone wrong. Yeah. Career politicians, slick fellas in suits, who've never done a proper day's work like you and me, ladies and gentlemen. Not one of them, not one of them, yeah, has chased a bullock round the field. Yeah, not, <laughs> not one of them has sat in a Nissan hut doing nothing. Yeah. 
these, these are bad examples. I'm just trying to work with what's in front of me. <laughs> Not one of whom is, can't be trusted with a fucking secret. You useless bastard, Steve. <laughs> Yeah, career politicians, slick lads with focus groups, yeah? Pots of coffee and biscuits to try and figure out what you and me won. All right, yeah? It's an outrage, yeah? Not people who put... No, they've never pulled a pint in their lives, have they? No, they wouldn't know their dry roast from their salted nut. It's a disgrace. <laughs> that and the other people we're giving this country to, of course, is experts. Now, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've all run into experts in all lines of work, haven't we? And we all know what an expert is. It's someone yeah, who breezes into our place of work and tells us how to do our job, even though they've never done that job themselves before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and they come in, don't you? Yeah, and they, they bear down on you, don't they, with their shield of waffle. Yeah, they're powerful. <laughs> from shield of waffle, they come down on you like that, and then pin you down, and then they emit a fog of blah blah like that. That, over, that overwhelms you, overpowers you. We got, any, we got any teachers here tonight? Any teachers in? Yeah, the lady there. What was your name, love? Claire. Claire. What'd you teach, Claire? Primary. A oh, round of applause for that. Thank you, Claire. Frontline coal face, yeah? Frontline. On the front line, on the coal face, God bless you, darling. Doing your bit to ensure that children these days, who are the future, the children these days face a level playing field, yeah, in the world, yeah? You're creating a level playing field of opportunity for kids these days, and God bless you, Claire, for doing that, thank you. Not sure about the way you're doing it exactly, by making, <laughs> making sure that none of the little turds can read and write, but there you go. <laughs> As long as the clever ones don't stick out and upset anybody. Now, so... <laughs> but am I right, Claire, when I say that the teaching profession is beset by experts? Am I right? Yeah? Every couple of years you get a couple down a line, don't they? A couple down a pipe, yeah, who've never taught a lesson in their lives telling you how to do it. Am I right? Yeah? Yeah, and you're sat there and they're going, well, what we're trying to do, Claire, is reinvent the learning experience, transform the classroom into a, not, not a place where you're the authority as the teacher, but somewhere where you're leading these children, guiding these children. The pupil is at the centre of the learning on a journey through the discovery of stuff, not giving them facts to learn, but to guide them on a blah, 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 and you think this is my fucking lunch hour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then you go back to that classroom and teach the same lesson you've taught the last 15 years. Now, the point is, the shield of waffle, the fog of blah blah. And the most important, our world, we've given our world to experts, that's what we've done. And the most important experts of all are, of course, the experts in the world of high finance. Now, they use an expertise, yeah, that they've dressed up and fooled us, they've tried to fool us all into thinking it's the real deal, right? And they use a thing, the lads, Ben, you may have heard of, a thing called economics. Now, have you heard of that, son? Yeah, he has, you, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, economics. Yeah. Now, economics, of course, they dress it up as a science, yeah? They tell you you can study at university for three years, four years, five years, ten years, yeah? And they've got all the words to go with their expertise, haven't they? Like, like GDP and GMP and all that stuff and inflation and growth and all that stuff and, uh, you know, blah, 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 But here's the truth, lads. Yeah, economics, yeah, names are important. Economics had to change its name because we were onto them, yeah? Because its original name was actually... Reconomics, right? Because that's all economics actually involves, right? Reckoning stuff, yeah? Yeah, that's what they do. They have a look at the figures, they go, yeah, I reckon it'll go up this week. And that's it. <laughs> and they can spend three, five, ten years at university, but that's all they're fucking doing. Reckoning, right? Yeah. Now, Ben, have you heard of credit? Because I, I, I said I would explain to you the world financial system in under half a pint. Here we go, right? Here's global finance in under half a pint, right? Yeah? Dead simple, right? You've got reckoning, so economics, people reckoning stuff, right? And then you've got credit. Now, do you know what credit is, Ben? You pay something. Yeah, you're borrowing money. Borrowing, you're borrowing, borrowing money. That's what you think it is. You're borrowing money. Yeah, yeah. Well, it ain't borrowing, right? Yeah? You've got a best mate. You lend him your football. Yeah? You want that football back three months later? Does he have to give you two and a half footballs? No, he doesn't. No. <laughs> he just gives you the one football back. Because you lent in the football, you want it back. It's that simple, yeah? Yeah. However, you want to borrow 500 quid from the bank, yeah? You're not borrowing that money, son. You're buying it off the bastards, yeah? 
You want 500 quid, you've got to pay him 1,200 quid for the fucking privilege, yeah? And that 700 pound difference, that's called interest. And the reason it's called interest, ladies and gentlemen, is because you'd be interested if you were doing that deal. Now, the thing is... So... Yeah. You see? And why is it called credit? What does credit mean? Do you know what it means? It comes from a Latin word. You need to go to more pub quizzes, son. Not to Thailand, right? <laughs> broaden your mind. It's called credit because it comes from a Latin word, credo, I believe, yeah? That's all it is. Credit, yeah, the borrowing and lending of money is a belief system, right? You believe it, right? You believe, and we've ended up in this amazing situation. I mean, the bank believes you're going to pay off your credit card. <laughs> Yeah, you reach the point where you believe you're going to pay off your fucking thing. <laughs> People believe mental rubbish, don't they, right? And this is the problem. The whole world of global, global finance relies on some people reckoning stuff and some people believing it, yeah? Economics and credit. Reckoning, belief. Now, do you know what debt is as well, Ben? It's the third component. Do you know what it is? Yeah, when you run out of money. No, no, it's not when you run out of money. No, it's when the bank stops believing you, right? Yeah. <laughs> It's doubt, yeah? yeah? Debt is doubt. The bank doesn't believe you anymore. You lose your credit, you're fucked. It's that simple, yeah? Because they doubt you. Look, I'll explain this. This is how the world of global finance works, yeah? Because we're currently in the hands of the markets. And who are the markets? A bunch of appalling bastards and the women prepared to hang out with them, right? That's who, right? Yeah? <laughs> Right, and this is how it works. Monday morning, London Stock Exchange. The lads come in. All right there, Gary, how you fucking doing? <laughs> ah, brilliant weekend, Keith. Have you heard of that place called Bristol? We went up there, we smashed in all the fucking windows. It's awesome, yeah? Fantastic, yeah? And no one even noticed. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and they get out the Financial Times to look at the figures in Monday morning's Financial Times so they can get reckoning, use their reconomic powers to begin reckoning. Now, now, everyone knows, Monday morning's figures in Monday's Financial Times, they can't be Monday morning's figures, can they? That's impossible, because no trading has occurred on Monday morning, has it, yeah? So they can't be Monday's figures. So obviously, they're Friday night's figures, yeah? Now, as we all know, there's no way they're Friday night's figures, because no one does a stroke of work on Friday if they could possibly fucking avoid it. So, <laughs> obviously, they're Thursday's figures. Now, everyone knows you don't do on Thursday what you put off what you did on Wednesday, yeah? Which you decided to do on Tuesday, which you were told to do on fucking Monday. So, Monday morning's figures in the Financial Times, Obviously, last Monday's fucking figures the financial. <laughs> they bear no relevance to today. They're probably from last month, last year, ten years ago, maybe even twenty-five years ago when a volcano went off. Who knows? Right? <laughs> but they get looking, they get reckoning. They've got nothing to do with today, tomorrow, next week, next month, ten years down the line. But they use them anyway as their guide. They have a look. Go well. Well, what do you reckon, Gary? I reckon tins going up. Yeah, I think that's probably going up. What about copper? Yeah, I reckon copper will go up as well. What about um, them derivatives? Yeah, I don't know what they are, mate. But let's fucking buy some anyway. <laughs> Now, so they've done their reckoning, they've now got to get someone to believe in them. They go see the boss, they knock on his door. Yeah? Oh, uh, come on in, chaps, how you doing? Fantastic, great to see you. <laughs> Bloody marvellous. Come on in, come on in, OK. So, have you had a look? Yeah, OK. Well, you know they're not this morning's figures. <laughs> so, <laughs> tell you what, um, I, I reckon copper's going up, reckon tin's going up, reckon pharmaceuticals are a pretty good bet. I think some of those derivatives as well, chaps, though, I'll be honest with you, I haven't a ad, simple clue what they fucking are. OK, so... <laughs> So, should we do that? Okay, right, I'll tell you what, I'll call my brother at the bank, he believes anything I tell him, it's fantastic. But he'll lend me the money, we can get cracking, jolly good, let's carry on, yeah? So, he, they, they go out on the trading floor and they get going, and I'll buy some of that copper, please, some of that tin, please, some of them derivatives. No, no, mate, no, not a clue, but I need some anyway, right? And up it goes. Up it goes, the market becomes confident. Ah, 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 ah. Up it goes, it goes up, the footsie goes up. Yeah, none of you know what that fuck it is. It's on the news every night, you go, oh right, and you don't know what it is, do you? <laughs> no one does, so up it goes, yeah? An hour of brisk trading, as they say in the financial world, occurs, yeah? And then the phone rings. On the line, it's Frankfurt, the bourse in Frankfurt, the most important money market on continental Europe. That's right, the Germans are calling. <laughs> Hello, England! Es ist Frankfurt hier! Frankfurt, rufen Sie! Rufen Sie England! Hello, England! Es ist Frankfurt hier! Mein kleiner Engländer Freund! Es ist Frankfurt! Deutschland! Deutschland, rufen Sie! Ich <lacht> Deutschland, rufen Sie England! Ich möchte sprechen mit England, bitteschön! Bitteschön, England! 
England, es ist Deutschland, ja, Deutschland, ich möchte es weigern mit England, mit der Landungsdock Exchange, bitte schön. Hallo, 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 Deutschland, ja, Deutschland auf. Deutschland, rufen Sie mein Volk, ich möchte es weigern mit England. Is that you, Fritz? <laughs> and I'd just like to point out, ladies and gentlemen, before we go any further, that is actually his name, right? He's, he's called Fritz. It isn't some clumsy stereotype I've bunged you just to bounce you along through this section of the show. He's called Fritz. That's his name, right? Are you okay? Right? That's his name, Fritz. Fritz Messerschmitt. Now. <laughs> on extension 109. Okay. So. <laughs> ah, hello England, mein Freund England. Wie geht es Ihnen dieses Morgen? Es ist ein sehr schönes Morgen hier aus Frankfurt. Ein sehr schöner Morgen, der Sonne scheint, etc. Sehr gut. Hey, das Wurmskopf war sehr gut, ja. <lacht> wir haben gewinnen, ja. Deutschland, wir sind die Championen auf das Welt. <lacht> Und sie war aus in der ersten Runde. England aus in der ersten Runde. Sie sind scheiß aus, verstanden? Ja. Sie sind scheiß und sie kennen, sie sind. 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 Ja. Sie sind scheiß, ja. Es kommt zu Hause, es kommt zu Hause. Oh ja. Fußball kommt zu Hause, es kommt zu Hause. <lacht> hey, und in der Final, wir haben Argentina ein sehr schön Arschficker gegeben. Ja, wir haben mit Argentina sind sehr gut Arschficken. Ja, das war sehr gut, ja, Argentina. Oh ja, das ist schönes Arschgeficken. How can I help, mate? <laughs> ha! Oh, yeah, very good, very good, very good. Uh, uh, here aus Deutschland, we wollen wissen, wenn es regnen, es geht hoch dieses Morgen, oder wenn es regnen, es geht unten. Was regnen Sie? Hoch oder unten? Was regnen Sie, mein Engländer Freunde? Was regnen Sie? Well, actually, mate, we reckon it's going up, don't we? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Mark, he's confident. Listen to it. It's going up. Listen, listen. Yeah. It's fantastic, mate. How about that? Yeah? You happy with that? Yeah, that's is very good, England. Thank you, thank you. Hey, Brazil, 7-1. That's for unglaublich, yeah? We have a very good ass for them to Yeah, Brazil. Oh, I'm feeling the Pele. I'm feeling the choosy, choose, 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 choose. In Deutschland, Deutschland, besser aus Fußball. Auf Wiedersehen. Hangs up now. <laughs> now. He then, if you want, he then goes. He goes onto the trading floor of the Frankfurt Burst, gets his mates together. Yeah, um, uh, Herr Heinkel, Herr Dornier, Herr Junkers, <laughs> yeah. Herr Fockerwolf, um, <laughs> Fräulein Tiger Tank. Look, it's all right. <laughs> That's all I fucking know about Germany, right? So, right. <laughs> and he assembles his mates and he says, he tell, gives them the good news. Mein Freund, ich habe die Zeitung aus London. Es geht hoch dieses Morgen. Mein Freund, es geht sehr, sehr hoch. Sie regnen, es geht hoch. Und ich glaube, es geht hoch. Oh, ja, das ist sehr gut. Es geht hoch dieses Morgen. Ja, es geht hoch. Es ist sehr gut. Es geht hoch dieses Morgen. Ja, das ist sehr gut. Natürlich, ja. Ich liebe die. <laughs> so up it goes. Up it goes in Germany. It's going to hockety hock hock hock, right? All because of what they, they reckon in London and Frankfurt believe them. You see, lads, it's that simple, right? Global finance, what they reckon, they believe. Up it goes, right? Four hours of brisk trading, as they like to say, proceed, right? And the phone rings. Yeah, on the line, ladies and gentlemen, it's Tokyo. <laughs> No. Not doing it. <laughs> no. Oh. 
Oh, uh, you persuaded me. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what I'll do. To give you that dash of oriental flavour you so desperately crave, <laughs> that splash of soy sauce you seem to need so, so urgently. But what I'll do, I'll do it just for you. I'll do it in the style of a heavily dubbed kung fu movie, OK? <laughs> OK, so we're in, we're in Germany. The phone rings. Yeah. Deutschland hier. Wie ist das? Wie ist das? Deutschland hier. Hallo. <lacht> Tokio hier. And we, here in the land of the rising sun, well, <coughs> wondering whether you, a Teutonic trading partner, <laughs> could tell us whether it is going up this morning, or whether you reckon it is going down. Master. And Sullivan, I did not quite catch that. <laughs> Repeat, bitte schön. <laughs> Hello. Tokyo here. Listen. Carefully. Frankfurt. Here. We wish to know whether you reckon it is going up or whether you reckon it is going down. <laughs> <laughs> and we need this information as quickly <laughs> as possible. <laughs> Master. <laughs> <laughs> Tokyo, ah, the good man, kleine Japan as a friend. It's get hock, this is smoking out Deutschland. It's get hock, yeah, hock, 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 hock. Hören Sie, das ist get hock, this is smoking sehr, 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 sehr hock. It's a very good man, friend. Ah, viele Seelen. Hey, das World Cup war sehr gut, ja. Hey, wir haben gearsch gefickt Brasil, das ist sehr gut. <laughs> Mit der Brasilien, ah, oh, sehr gut, ja. <laughs> It is gegangt. <laughs> yeah, so our friend Mr. Edamami Wagamama, that's his name, that's what I've called him, right? Because <laughs> I'm not going to call him Hiroshima Nagasaki, you sick fucks, am I? <laughs> he, goes, he goes onto the trading floor of the uh, Japanese stock market, he gets his mates together Henry Honda, uh, Mike Mitsubishi, Nigel Nintendo, uh, S Steve Sony, and um, Alan Yamaha. And he pulls them together <laughs> and he passes on the good news. Gentlemen, you get a picture. Anyway, so up it goes. <laughs> up it goes. So it's going up in London. You see, lads, it's going up in London. Then it goes up in Frankfurt. Then it goes up in Tokyo because it's going around the world. Because what they reckon in London, they reckon that too in Frankfurt. They now believe it in Tokyo. Up it goes. You see, boys, global finance, yeah? Four hours of brisk trading on the Tokyo Stock Exchange floor pass. And then there's a phone call. On the line, it's San Francisco. Hello there, Tokyo. <laughs> Oh, you like that, don't you, you hypocrites? 
and San Francisco here. How you doing, my little Susie jumping friends? How you doing? I want to know if you think it's going up, which I like, or if you think it's going down, which is also very agreeable. <laughs> Hello, friend of the fault line. We here in Tokyo reckon it is going up today. Mm, Master. <laughs> Thanks very much. So it goes up in San Francisco. She's going to London, yeah, Frankfurt, Tokyo, San Francisco. Do you see, boys? Yeah, San Francisco. Then he gets on the line, he calls New York. Hello, New York City. It's San Francisco here. Who the fucking fuck's this? <laughs> Who the fuck are you to fucking call me on my fucking phone? You fucking fuck. I'm gonna fuck you, and then I'm gonna fuck the fuck I fucked you with, and then you'll be fucked, you fucking fuck! You fucking understand me? <laughs> Friendliest city in the world. You fucking fuck! I just wanna let you know, fuck you! I just wanna tell you, fuck you, you fuck! Just wanna tell you what's going up in Tokyo. <laughs> Listen, yeah, so New York City he gets his mice together. Listen, you fucking fucks, it's fucking going up. You get that? It's fucking going up. We're going to fucking fuck town today. It's fucking going up. Why can't you say it's fucking going up? <laughs> you fucking telling me it's fucking going up, you, you fucking fuck. I tell you what, I have to fuck you now because you're trying to fuck me. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fuck you before you fuck me. And obviously you're going to fuck me because you know I'm going to fuck you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fuck you twice. And then you'll be twice fucked before you even get to fuck me. And if you're twice fucked, I might as well fuck you a third time. So I fuck you a third time. And then you won't even be able to fuck me because I'd have fucked you a fourth time for the fucking fun of it. I'll fuck you four or five fucking times over before you even think about fucking me, you fucking fuck. You fucking understand me, you fucking fuck. Do we fucking understand each other, you fucking fuck? <laughs> so up it goes in New York. <laughs> it's going up all over the world. It's going up in London. It's going up in Frankfurt. It's going up in Tokyo, San Francisco, and New York City. Up it goes. Yeah, the market's confident. Every now and again, there's a, a plaintive phone call. Hello there. Uh, are you sure you really want to lend us all this fucking money? Now. <laughs> but up it goes, nevertheless. Up, up and up. Hock and hock, hock, hock. Up it goes, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah? And then it crashes. All of a sudden, now no one knows why. Nobody knows why. No one, right? Economic cycles tend to be about 15, 12 years. They're getting shorter now between boom and bust. Getting down to seven or eight years, yeah? I mean, the longest ever um, was uh, 25 years after the Corn Laws were repealed. And if you ask Pops about that after the show, he'll be able to fill in. <laughs> Happy days, eh? You and Mr Gladstone. Now, the thing is... <laughs> they had it coming to Crimea, didn't they, Pops? Now, the thing is... The thing is, no one knows why these market crashes happen, because no one wants them to, it's no one's favour, but they happen anyway. When suddenly they have what they call a readjustment, where they realise they've been paying far too much money for the things they're obviously paying far too much money for, right? Yeah, and no one knows. Now, I reckon I know, right? Because it's economics, I can reckon what I want, right? I reckon it just happens by accident, random fate. Yeah? What happened one Monday morning, the lads come bowling in. All right, they carry, yeah, fantastic weekend. <laughs> we set fire at this place called Siren Sister. Fucking amazing. Now, <laughs> and they notice in the open plan office there's a cubicle at the end. And in the cubicle is their boss, striking a tragic silhouette, smoking a tragic cigarette, looking terribly, terribly dejected. They think, oh Christ, what's up with the gaff? What? So they go down the knock on the door and let themselves in. What? You right there, Governor? Well, actually, uh, no, no, chat. I mean, thanks for asking, very kind. Yeah, I understand you, um, yeah, I heard about Siren Sister. You know I own it. Now, <laughs> no, my weekend, well, you know what? It wasn't brilliant. You, um, you know how my father also owns the top right-hand corner of Scotland? Well, <laughs> we went shooting at the weekend. It was quite fantastic, beautiful day for it. Lovely, lovely, lovely shooting. Bagged a few grouse, a couple of ptarmigan, lovely time. But trouble is, um, I left the handbrake off on uh, one of the Land Rovers and it rolled downhill and ran over my favourite uh, black Labrador. Yeah. yeah, you know, the one whose name I can't use in the workplace. And the thing is... <laughs> I mean, 
can't even put it in an email anymore. <laughs> Bloody filter will pick it up, lose my job. The thing is, <laughs> I love that dog. I bloody love that dog. And you know, uh, I'm really sad about it. It's making me very down. I reckon today for me is going to be down, 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 down. I reckon today for me is a down day, just down, 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 down. Well, I'm going down today, that's what I reckon. Now, one of the other lads walks past the office. Here's this. Here's the boss saying down, 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 down. That's what I reckon, yeah? And he doesn't believe it, right? Yeah, he's gone from credit. Yeah? To doubt, to debt. He thinks, fuck, we've got to shift this stuff, yeah? Get rid of that copper. I've got to get rid of that tin. Oh, those derivatives. No, I never knew what they were and I don't want them anymore. Right? <laughs> and the market crashes. It spreads like wildfire. Yeah? The doubt creeps and spreads and the whole thing falls in on itself. Word reaches Germany. Nein, das ist unglaublich. Nein, nein, das ist unglaublich. Nein, wo ist Steiner? Wo ist Steiner? Nein, nein. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Word reaches Tokyo. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> oh my God, I don't believe it, San Francisco. You fucking fucks! <laughs> <laughs> and that giant merry-go-round of money, ladies and gentlemen, that none of us get to ride, we don't even get to listen to the music, yeah? Comes off its tracks, yeah? The tail that's wagging the dog, yeah? Comes off, crashes into lives, economies, jobs, and lays waste to everything that everyone holds dear. Huh? Yeah, and it's all topped off by one final plaintive phone call. Hello there. Uh... <laughs> what do you mean do you want all the feckin' money back? <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the world global financial system. It's strange. You don't know how to buy it. Yeah. Up the workers. Finally, we had any workers. Right, so, <laughs> so here we are. We've reached that moment, Lane General. I'm going to make an announcement for you tonight, which is this. I'm prepared to answer fate's unheard call. <laughs> yeah, which is this. Next spring, next May, there will be a general election. And I'm planning to stand for government. Now. <laughs> but. but not Parliament, we're going to do our own thing. It's going to be called a government. I stand before you as your future governor, right? You will have to call me mine governor. That's what you have to call me. <laughs> You'll also have to buy my book and appreciate my paintings. Now, <laughs> we'll, have, we'll have one big election, then we won't be having any more elections after that because they just cause trouble and disagreement, don't they? So, but thing is, I stand before you, my people's parliament, ladies and gentlemen, without any policies. Now, I realise in this modern day and age that's not necessarily an obstacle to politics. But <laughs> I want to make a difference. I want to be different to the others. So what I'm going to do is ask you to help me come up with a manifesto. You, the really ordinary people of the UK, the most ordinary people I could find, you will help me do this. And to do this, we're going to put the house lights up, please. The team here, yeah, up go the house lights. And what we're going to do, yeah, you're going to put your hands up, ask me what the government's policy on something will be, right? I will do my best to answer that and come up with a manifesto pledge that I will act upon as soon as I reach power in the new year. Okay, you up for this? Yeah. 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 Now, what you'll have to do, right, is once I pick one out and I try and answer that, don't try and interrupt anything because it makes a mess of it, right? And we've got to do this in a democratic fashion while we still have a democracy before I get rid of it. Okay, so... <laughs> So, who would like to go first? Yeah? Yes, the, the fella there, yes, sir. Immigration. Immigration. Oh, right. <laughs> Straight to it, the elephant in the room. Yeah. <laughs> that mean you two. Yeah. Now. Immigration. Immigration, well, you know, it's something that's affecting everyone. It's affecting everyone's lives, isn't it? Coming over here, working hard on us, making us look like a bunch of feckless entitled tits. <laughs> don't Poles understand you don't work, Thursdays? Now, the thing is... <laughs> it's a worrying business. You could look at it the other way, which is this, right? They're not stopping in France, are they? Eh? I mean, who would? Hey! <laughs> If that's your choice, you're going to come here, aren't you? Yeah? I mean, who'd want to eat roadkill, breakfast, lunch and tea? But... <laughs> truth is, it is an issue that's affecting a lot of people, worrying a great deal of people. After all, we've seen it in action, right? Earlier in the year, in January, as we all know, there was very heavy flooding in Somerset. Now that, that was not caused 
by gay marriage, as UKIP would have us believe. No. <laughs> no. Nobody can cry that much. No. <laughs> well, was... <laughs> what it was obviously caused by was the sheer weight of Romanian people <laughs> who'd got to Somerset early for the apple picking harvest. <laughs> but... Causing Somerset, the county, to sink into the in, in, yeah, to sink into the Bristol Channel. But yeah, science. So what? Yeah, scientifically provable. So I have a proposal on the question of immigration, Sir Dead Simple. First thing we do, first thing we do is we brick up the Channel Tunnel. Secondly, yeah, yeah you're, you're happy with that? We brick up Kent as a special <laughs> Ebola quarantine zone. Yeah. Then, Seeing as we've got the bricks and mortar out, we brick up Essex as well, so those cunts can't get out either. <laughs> yeah. You see? This is what happens when you listen to the people. Right, OK. Any, any more? Yeah, uh, the lady there, yes, love? Education. Education, thank you. Education is what matters, isn't it? Yeah? So are you a teacher, my darling? What do you, what's your name? <coughs> Nikki, what do you teach, Nicks? Languages. Languages. Mm. <laughs> Which ones? French. French. <laughs> oh, you know, I'll tell you what, you can go work at the MOD. Right? <laughs> Keep an eye on the French. No, education's important. And the thing is, darling, right, you teachers, you, you're right there, cold face, front line, we discussed that earlier. The thing is, though, darling, right, you educationists, you teachers, you're up against something right now, aren't you? You're up against it. Technology is changing the nature of teaching, isn't it? And there's a question doing the rounds at the moment, which is this. Who needs teachers when you got Google? <laughs> who, who needs teachers when you got Google? You, see, you know what I mean? You're up against it. You just look it up, can't I? Like that, just like up it comes, yeah? Up it comes, whatever I want to know. Where is the far canal? Up it comes. <laughs> Who needs teachers when you've got Google? But you'd say, Nicky, what you'd obviously say to me is, well, you need a teacher, right, to guide the pupil, the student, through the information. They can't just pick a fact randomly out there. They've got to know its context, its provenance. They've got to know how it relates to the other facts. They've got to weigh it critically with the other information. And then, of course, in a social group to socialise that information, because after all, that's what they'll have to do one day in a workplace, isn't it? Is gather that information together and work together on the information with other people. What you need is a teacher to enable this. That's probably what you'd say, isn't it, love? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> But I'd come straight back at you with this. Yeah. Google yeah, isn't pissed on a Tuesday. <laughs> Google. 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 Right. Doesn't take a third of the year off. Google. <laughs> Google. Google. Doesn't knock off at quarter past three. Google. <laughs> Google isn't trying to have sex with a sixth form. <laughs> Which is why I would close all schools and give them all a laptop. Right, so... I hope that's answered your question, my love. <laughs> Who's next? Yeah, uh, yes, the lady there. Gap years. Gap years. <laughs> <laughs> you can do a gap year, but in Afghanistan. <laughs> You'll find yourself there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> In a foxhole being shot at. Right, yeah. Yes, sir. VAT on alcohol. VAT on alcohol. Okay, right, okay. Finally, an issue, finally an issue that matters to me, all this other stuff. <laughs> Flim flam. Right, I'll tell you what. I propose a new beer pricing, right? Yeah. Now, this may to some of you appear to be a sort of cheap vote-winning gesture, right? Just a piece of populist politics, it's just a, uh, like a bribe. It may appear like that to you, as a clumsy attempt to get you to vote for me. But the my alcohol pricing, day one of my new government, will be this. One P a pint. <laughs> I'm happy, happy to announce that. And uh, uh, one P glass of white wine, fruit-based drink for the lady. 
<laughs> See, this politics is easy. Right. Another one, please. Yeah, yeah on the end there, yes, sir. The NHS. The NHS. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Save the NHS. Yeah, that's what I say. And I want to save the NHS, ladies and gentlemen, but I also want to save lives. Now... <laughs> Now, what was your name, pal? Mark. Mark. Would you work in the NHS, sir? No, I work in the bookies. You work in the bookies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK, well, I'll tell you what. I, <laughs> I offer you an NHS policy that we can all get behind, Lane Gentlemen, because I want to save the NHS. I do. I really do. It matters a great deal to me. But I want to create jobs as well. Now, you'll probably notice as we go forward with some of these policies that I put to you that I operate on a two birds, one stone system. Right? <laughs> so. Two birds, one stone. Now, the two birds, one stone NHS policy is this. Am I right? Where are the nurses here this evening? Yeah? Am I right, ladies, that heart disease is the biggest killer amongst men currently? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to come up with a thing that will create jobs in the NHS, save the NHS and cure heart disease. And it's this. Basically, every woman between the ages of 18 and 21 has to do two years national service as a nurse. Now, that's probably about three million women. Now, they've all got to wear uniforms. Now, obviously... <laughs> That means a shortage of uniform material if you're going to have to suddenly come up with a lot of uniforms very quickly. So, in order to economise on the material, these uniforms will be cut. <laughs> <laughs> and if that doesn't cause the necessary cardiac exercise to save this country, <laughs> to save lives, I don't know what will. So there you go. Two birds, one stone. You happy, sir? Thank you. Excellent. Now. Who's next? Yes, the fellow there. Defence? Okay, right, well, very important. Of course, with the Colonel here, right? <laughs> and his relief worker. Now... <laughs> here, well, I'll tell you what, I offer you a coherent defence strategy, and it is this, right? We are about to leave Afghanistan, am I right, Colonel? We're about to leave Afghanistan, draw down by Christmas, am I right? Yeah, we're coming out, we're leaving, we're giving up, right? We're not giving up, we just decide to come home. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> And we've been there 13 years, three whole years longer than the Russians, which means we don't look like puffs on the international stage. <laughs> now, when the Russian leader keeps on taking off his shirt in homoerotic situations, that's very important. <laughs> now, thing is though, that war in Afghanistan, and I, I have to say thank you to our boys and girls, if it wasn't for them right now, we'd all be speaking Pashtun. But the truth is, <laughs> the truth is, I think we, that war, we've not got it right. I'm going to say this right now. Sorry, Colonel, I've got to stick my neck out here. So we've not got that war right. Yeah, we fought it at arm's length. We haven't done it properly, right? That's where we've gone wrong, yeah? And we're, we're about to come back. We're going to fly the stuff out because we flew the stuff in, fly the stuff out. I think we need to radically change the entire thing to make up for lost time. I'd like the British Army to fight its way back from Afghanistan. So... <laughs> pack the stuff up. Right, yeah, and then fight. They've got to fight west through the top of Afghanistan, yeah, then in through Iran, give them a fucking seeing too. <laughs> back into Iraq, we're back, remember us? <laughs> Crazy gang here, yeah? Then into Syria and give them a firm one in the nuts, sort that out. Yeah? <laughs> up, up into Turkey, yeah, fucking teach them a lesson for sitting around doing nothing at the moment. Yeah? Yeah? Then into Bulgaria, never had a war with Bulgaria, it might be a laugh. Up into. <laughs> Up into Poland, smash Poland up so the builders have to go home and fix it, you see. Yeah. Thinking. Then. Then. Into Germany for a victory lap. <laughs> They've been too quiet for too long. Then. Down through Holland, out, down through Belgium, out through the Channel Tunnel, brick it up behind them. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. There we have it. The Xenophon strategy for you there, yeah? Tell them on Monday morning, good man. Now, so... <laughs> well, I think there we have, we've achieved so much. That's amazing. Give yourselves a round of applause. You've created... You. 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 You have created a manifesto tonight that's at least as coherent as anything that will be put in front of you next spring. <laughs> and I forgot the deficit as well, never mind. Now, the thing is... <laughs> Seen a matter, does it? Now, 
But in the end, lads, little Ben, little Ben, <coughs> mother's milk's still wet in your face. <laughs> ben. <laughs> little Ben. In the end, mate, it's how you live your life that matters. Governments come and go. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask how much housing benefit there is for that bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Governments come and go, mate, right? Yeah? Empires rise and crumble. It's how you live your life that matters, mate. Understand me. I'm saying that from the bottom of my heart. There's the one bit of guidance I can really give you. Yeah? And when you need to figure out how to live your life, your very best bet is to turn to the wisdom of the ancients. Now, <laughs> we're incredibly lucky that with us tonight, Lane Jeremy, <laughs> is the world's oldest man. <laughs> Pops. Old timer, ancient pilgrim. <laughs> Before it's too late, tell us, yeah, all this time wisdom accrued upon this earth, yeah? What is your message for us from the end of time? What have you got for us? I think all these pubs that are being closed yeah. should be converted to care hubs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two birds, one stone. That was quite beautiful. <laughs> but I think I need to offer the boys more. Right. And I want to offer you some true wisdom, boys, from the greatest philosopher of all time, a British man, yeah, whose name you might recognise, a British man by the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Seen pictures of him, he's obviously British. He? <laughs> so very wise. And Top bloke, loved his mum, always got his round in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Padded out, his fish supper with bread and butter. Definitely British. Nah. <laughs> Whoa, mama, fish and chips. Nah. He... Jesus said many wise things, some of which were written down, some of which weren't. Yeah? But there's two I'd like to share with you tonight. Two for you lads and for everyone else. Right? And good luck, boys. Good luck. Yeah. And, uh, First thing Jesus said I want to put to you tonight is probably the most famous thing he ever said. The famous thing he said, which was, you should love your neighbour as you love yourself. Now that's beautiful, isn't it? That is truly beautiful. Love your neighbour as you love yourself. We should all try and live by that. Do you think, yeah? Love your neighbour. It's the golden rule. That's what they call it. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. To unto, to, to, unto. <laughs> unto, to, to. Now, the thing is... <laughs> And that's beautiful. It's in all the main religions. There's the golden rule. It's in Islam. It's right there in the Quran. If you'll allow me, if you'll indulge me, I'll quote it for you. It goes like this. I'm Muslim, Muslim, Muslim. Muslim, Muslim. <laughs> Muslim, 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 Muslim. Muslim. It's quite, quite beautiful in the original. And the... <laughs> but love your neighbours, you love yourself. Now, I'm sure in AD 30, when Jesus first came out of that, he blew people's minds. Yeah, like, I can't believe it, Jesus, it's amazing, wow! I never thought of it like that before, right? But does it stand the test of time? Does love your neighbours, you love yourself, really stand up in 2014? I'm not sure it does. I don't think Jesus thought it through. I don't think he took into account the invention of resident parking permits. <laughs> <laughs> because if that bloke from next door parks in my spot that I pay 85 quid a year for, I'll gut the cunt. <laughs> you two fish. <laughs> but Jesus also said that, that we should try and live each day as if it's our last. Sorry, Pops. <laughs> <laughs> You're footing it there. We should try and live each day as if it's our last. And what did he mean by that? What do we think Jesus meant by that? Well, I think there's two ways of interpreting it. The first, you could look at it like this. You could think what he's trying to do is say to us, look, imagine it's your last day on earth. What have you got to do? You've got to, you've got to face up the things you did wrong. You've got to, you've got to find forgiveness for those who, 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 who did wrong to you. And you've got to forgive yourself for the things you did wrong as well. Somewhere in there, you've got to find forgiveness. And the place to find forgiveness is in Christ's sacrifice upon the cross in redemption of our sins, yeah? 
God giving up his only son in the eternal well of forgiveness that lives within the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, through the Father, the Son, and the blah, 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 Amen. Now, that's one interpretation. The other one, of course, is if it's your last day on the planet, you might as well get on it. Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. And let no man judge us, for it is the way of our people. Thank you very much, and good night. We are pleasure you good night. Good night, sir. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> Colonel. Roy and Amy. Good boy. Good luck, lad. Hot. One final journey. Good luck. <laughs> oh, ho, 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 ho.